Local and international police have made more than 140 arrests since the violent reaction to the formation of the new government here. Among those hauled in, nine gunmen alleged to have been involved in the attack on the UN convoy. Any attack on the United Nations, whether United Nations officials or property, is a crime that must not go unpunished. And in this country, we must not allow it to happen. Fretland leader, former Prime Minister Mary al Khatiri met President Ramos Horta in Dili this morning to discuss the violence. We are here uh, to calm down the situation and to, to, to bring back stability and, uh, and peace for the country. Fretland has stepped back from its pledge to bring the new government down with a show of people power. It's also set to return here to Parliament next week after initially threatening a boycott. We're very, very relieved and we welcome Fretland's decision to return into the Parliament. They have a very valid and important role as the opposition uh, and the opposition's role in form formulating policies and laws that will guide this country over the next five years. So we think it's a good sign and we, we strongly encourage that sign. But Fretland, which came first in the recent election but failed to win an overall majority, says the fight is not over yet. It plans to challenge the authority of the new government politically, but not legally. It seems like they don't want to go to court, but at the same time they say it's non-constitutional. So uh, are they in doubt about their own uh, rhetoric? In an act of conciliation, President Ramos Horta has invited some senior Fretlin leaders, including the man who challenged him for the presidency, to join him on the Council of State. Cooler heads are prevailing, but it is early days, and the security forces here are leaving nothing to chance. In East Timor, Brian Thompson, World News Australia.